I'm going to show you the dashboard. It is username. Think next password, whatever we have given, and I'll say login. If everything is good, it will actually going to take me to a dashboard of Robin. So this is our dashboard. See here. See this. It is saying there is one node, but it is not initialized. So we will mitigate all these things either using or we can fix all these things by adding roles from GUI as well as CLI. So I'm going to do it using CLI. Uh, if you want, I can demonstrate it from GUI as well. Now, let me tell you the major section of this dashboard. The first thing is this dashboard. This dashboard will going to give you the overall status of your uh, cluster. How many nodes are there? Which roles they belongs to? What are active alerts? What all are the events? What is the compute? uh resources etc available application details and if you scroll down when you enable the metrics it will going to give you the metrics also even you are going to see one one uh pop-up here which will show you grafana so click there and it will going to take you to the grafana dashboards also right so on main dashboard you are going to see the entire high level information of your cluster including applications compute resources and metrics applications this is a place where you are going to see your applications, installed applications. At present point in time, you are going to see only those applications which you deploy using Robin bundle. So if you are using Helm chart or if you are using native Kubernetes command line, so by default, those things will not come here. Now in the future or upcoming dashboard versions, I'm sure this will going to be there or there should be a separate section for that. So under this section, you are going to see all those things. Right now I was talking to you about VMs. Now when you talk about this image, don't get confused that these images are for container images. No, this section is for your VM QCOW2 images. So this container images means it is VM images. Right, so don't get confused. That's the reason I'm again specifying. This image doesn't mean container images. This image means the image which you can use to create VMs especially QCOW2 images, which you people deploy on KVMs. Now this repository. Now people sometimes get confused. This repository is, is for container repository or container register. No. Let's say you people are running applications and you want to take a backup of that application and you want to put that backup outside cluster. For that, you people have to configure repositories. So you can create, if, if I click on reg register here, see here, AWS S3, Google Cloud, even in the uh, latest version, it supports Azure Blob as well. So you can take a backup of your application and you can put it outside your cluster and you can restore it in case of disaster. Resources, if you come here, you will be able to see two things, namespaces and PDVs. Namespaces, again, these are Robin managed namespaces. These are not Kubernetes namespaces. Whatever you create using Robin, you are going to get it over here. Now, this is a special naming convention. This T means tenant and this U means user. T, double zero and then number. U, then five times zeros and number. So this is tenant ID and this is user ID. So whatever you create using uh, Robin ecosystem, you are going to get here. But if you talk about kubectl namespaces those will not come by default here and there is a reason to it that reason will be more clear when you people are having a good understanding of the rbac which simcloud platform offers so initially it might confuse you but when you start working on it and you understand the rbac provided by simcloud platform you will really say that this is a good uh, move by robin pdvs now when you talk about pdvs this is called persistent data volumes now these are in Kubernetes, we people know PV and PVC. Now, it is actually a construct of Robin, means it's a terminology which Robin brings in. Now, when you talk about PDVs, you can think of this as a shared file system or sh shared NAS disk. So this will going to act like your home, home uh, drive. Let's say you people have created a pod and you have allocated this persistent data volume to it and anything happened to that pod, you need not to worry. This volume will be there. You can access this volume from other pods. You can allocate it to other pods. You can put things inside it. It means this will going to be uh, 
not associated with the life cycle management of a pod. And this is actually having many use cases. So think of this as a home directory for a user, which you are creating using Robin. Infrastructure. So you are going to have nodes. So this will actually going to give you the node details. At present point in time, we are having a single node. So it is showing me a single node. See here, click to initialize to assign a role to it. You are having storage, you are having resource pool, and you are having network. So you are going to get all the resources here. Right now, scroll down users. Now, when you talk about users, you are going to get users here, which are local users. Users will going to be a part of a tenant. Tenants can have multiple uh, roles allocated to it. There are three roles actually super admin, tenant admin, and user, which is there in the slides as well. I'll show you. So you create a user, you allocate it to a tenant, and then you assign a role to it, and then you give permissions to them. So permissions are called capabilities. Roles are called uh, the roles which which is mentioned here. Tenant is a tenant. You can think of a group of namespaces in simple layman language, right? Scroll down. Now, when you talk about Copilot, here you are going to see alerts, events, jobs, and uh, user audits. So whatever alerts are there, whatever events it is generating, all all those things will be here. So it will be very useful for you to check the things. Now, when you talk about the settings, this is a place where you are going to see the things like registries, file collection, metrics, uh, and license information. So once you click it here, see this. At by default, Docker Hub is registered. You can even add more registries. File collection, a place where your images, where your bundles will get stored. So we are going to create it. License, the details about a license. Metrics, when you enable it, you are going to see a metrics, and here you are going to see something called Grafana. You click there, it will take you to a Grafana dashboard as well. You want to access things from outside, you can take those, uh, you know, those uh, context files or those cube config files from here. So, this is the file which you can copy, take outside, install Robin client, uh, and access your cluster from outside. Chargeback, now. When you talk about enterprise Kubernetes, it's all about giving something for the support. So now when you talk about chargeback for every application you deploy basis on GPUs, CPU, storage, memory, you people have to pay something. And those all details will be here in the chargeback. Right? So these are the major sections. Now again, it's impossible to cover everything with a demo in, in these many uh, hours, but I just give you a high level overview of this.